There are a few simple habits that helped me become a millionaire in my 20s. It's what Jeff Bezos used to build Amazon and Warren Buffett employs to make million dollar decisions. It's called mental models. A mental model is a type of habit you can use to guide your behavior, make decisions, and solve problems. There are thousands of mental models, but the good news is there are just six that really matter. First is game theory. Basically, it's a way to strategize how to maximize rewards and limit consequences when multiple people are involved and each have their own interest. Should you throw out rock or paper? Should I trade my two wood resources for his three ores? Can he really beat my full house or is he just bluffing? But it's not just about games. Governments use it to figure out the likelihood of a country going to war. CEOs use it to determine if they should acquire a competitor. And you can use it in your everyday life. eBay auctions, stock market investments, salary negotiations. Oftentimes, employees are scared of asking for a raise because they don't want to get rejected. But here's how to apply game theory to maximize your chances of getting one. Stick with me here, it can get a little complex. When I worked for a company about three years ago, I knew three things. One, I wanted a raise because I believed I deserved to be paid more. Two, my boss kind of liked me. And three, I would have preferred at the time to keep my job rather than quit. So I created this game theory payoff model, mapping out different scenarios that could happen. I knew that if I didn't ask for a raise, then I wouldn't receive one. If I asked for the raise, my boss could either give me the raise or reject my offer. For each scenario, I assigned happiness values from one to 10 for myself and for my boss. Naturally, the higher the value, the better. So if I didn't ask, I wouldn't get the raise and my happiness would be a five, my boss a 10. If I asked and my boss rejects my offer and I stayed, my happiness would be a four, my boss a 10. If I left, my happiness a 1 and my boss a 5 since, again, at the time, I preferred to stay. If I ask for the raise and my boss accepts my offer and I stay, my happiness is a 10 and my boss a 9. If I left, my happiness a 1 and my boss a 5. Assuming my boss knew this payoff model too, then chances are even if I asked for a raise and she said no, I would have likely stayed since my 4 happiness level is higher than my 1. Knowing this, I would never ask for a raise because my happiness of not asking, five, is higher than four. So I knew I needed to get some type of upper hand in this negotiation. I needed to increase my happiness level in the scenario that I left, and I did this by looking for another job offer. When I got one, my happiness level changed from a one to a seven if I left. I knew if I let my boss know that I had another opportunity and she didn't give me a raise, I would leave and my boss's happiness score would be a five, which would naturally incentivize her to give me a raise because the 10-9 value would be the best scenario for both of us. I have a ton more actionable insights and mental models that helped me do stuff like this. Sign up for Rethinkable, my free weekly newsletter to learn something new every week. Link below. When it comes to building wealth, think in systems. Instead of viewing everything as linear, A leading to B leading to C, look at things as a connected whole. When we were children, we were taught to break apart problems and fragment the world to make everything more manageable. The problem is, things don't exist in isolation. They're always surrounded and dependent on something else. People need food and water to survive. A pencil needs a tree for wood. A lamp needs electricity for power. When it comes to starting a side hustle or building a routine, everything you do is interconnected. Competitor analysis isn't just about research. It feeds into the product and marketing strategy. Exercising isn't just about staying fit. It feeds into your mental and physical health, impacting your day to day. Systems thinking allows you to identify leverage points, areas that impact how the entire system operates so you can improve the system over time. Think about a bathroom sink. The faucet and the drain are the leverage points. If you turn on the water, but you don't close the drain, water will keep flowing and the sink will never fill. If you wanna add more water, turn on the faucet and close the drain. If you want less water or empty the sink, turn off the faucet and open the drain. If you need to increase your focus and avoid getting distracted every 10 minutes, what will increase your mental stamina? Perhaps you need to learn how to enter deep flow state faster or start using the Pomodoro technique or get more sleep. Popularized by Warren Buffett, the two-list system is a master strategy at elimination. The school of thought that's about how to maximize your focus and master your priorities so you can excel at each one instead of being suboptimal with all of them. Start a business or strive for a promotion. Study for another hour or exercise. Watch the bear or hang out with friends. 
eliminating useless tasks and decisions is relatively easy. It's getting rid of things that you care about that's difficult. When I started one of my first businesses, I had way too many things on my plate. I worked on 20 tasks at the same time, had hundreds of unread emails and texts, and was also a new plant dad. The problem is there is only so much time and effort we can spend on any given day. After I broke down from feeling overwhelmed, I opened my notebook and wrote the top 20 tasks I had to accomplish this month. Then I circled the top five most important ones. At this point, I had two lists. The five items I circled were on list A and the other 15 items were on list B. Naturally, you might think the five items in list A are the things that you should work on ASAP and that the other 15 can be worked on in between, whenever you have some spare time. But that's wrong. The problem is, everything in list B are things that you also care about. It's easy to justify spending time on them, but when you compare them to list A, everything in list B is just a distraction. Every action has a cost. Each thing takes up time, energy, and space that can be put towards something else. That's why everything in list B is now the avoid at all cost list, and no matter what, even if the world is about to end, you do not pay any attention to list B until everything in list A is done. And that's what helped me stick with YouTube. And at first it was really challenging to grow. My videos were dry and boring, but eventually I realized that I can make them more engaging and unique with background music and sound effects. Like this scene is now sad and emotional, but now it's super energetic and powerful. My videos really leveled up after I started using Epidemic Sound, which has a huge library of 40,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects that you can use for your videos with new tracks added every week. So when I'm editing my videos, I just browse my preferred music, genre, mood, or theme, and if I hear something that I like, I can easily find similar tracks. And the best part is, I don't have to worry about copyright strikes or video takedowns, which means I can still monetize my videos. And I love that with just one account on Epidemic Sound, I can use it on other platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and podcasts. So if you want to level up your videos, click the link in my bio to get a free 30-day trial. Everything you post during your trial is protected, even if you cancel. Thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this portion of the video. Humans are conditioned to worry. According to one study, 40% of Americans worry about the future multiple times a week. And a lot of this worrying is about the most insignificant things. Is this a new wrinkle? Did I ever send that work email? Why isn't this plant growing faster? This is where the regret minimization framework comes in. Coined by Jeff Bezos, this framework helps you determine whether you should make a big decision or not by envisioning the future. My first job after college was on Wall Street. I was making over six figures and had a pretty solid career ahead of me. The only problem was I was miserable. I always dreamed of starting my own business to help others live wealthier and healthier lives, but I was petrified. Doing this was a huge risk. Should I quit a stable and promising career to start something from scratch? I envisioned myself as an 87 year old man looking back on my life and asking, which choice would I regret the least? Staying in my secure job or following my entrepreneurial dream? The regret minimization framework is really about gaining perspective and forcing you to think beyond the moment. Like looking out into the ocean, conceptualizing the size of the universe, or staring into Mr. Magic Lamp's eyes. When it comes to excelling at your job or starting a side hustle, we often think we need to find the perfect thing that no one else has done. But the truth is, nothing comes from nowhere. All creative work builds on what came before, and nothing is completely original. Matt Ridley said, innovation results from an evolutionary process. New ideas, processes, and inventions are just mutations of old ones. Alexander Bell might have patented the telephone, but he wasn't the first to invent it. Antonio Meucci built a telephone years prior. Even then, Meucci used technology invented by others before him. Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb by himself. Ford didn't invent cars. And Apple Macintoshes would have never existed without a tech company called Xerox. Steve Jobs famously said, good artists copy, great artists steal. Whenever I see something I really like, a funny video, a clever ad, or a funky pot, I collect it in my inspiration folder. When I'm in a creative rut, I'll look through it and ask myself, what can I do with this? How can I incorporate this into my own stuff? 
I'm not copying what other people are doing. I'm getting inspiration from multiple sources and transforming it into something new with my own style. Kobe Bryant said his moves were inspired from his heroes. Picasso was inspired by African art. And yes, I did just compare myself to Kobe and Picasso. The most successful people learned from others, and those before them did as well. When you stand on the shoulder of giants, you can see what others can't with their own eyes. What if I told you it was possible to speed up your path to financial freedom by following one simple formula? What if I said that with this formula, you can make more money by working less, so you can free up more time to do the things you love? Watching Insecure, eating pineapple pizza, and doom scrolling on the toilet. Economist Wilfredo Pareto discovered this formula in 1906 while tending to his pea plants. He found out by analyzing the heat index of the sun, velocity of the wind, and direction of plant growth that he wasn't a very good gardener. More importantly, he noticed that 80% of the healthy pea pods came from 20% of his pea plants. Back in his lab, he saw a similar pattern while researching the wealth of nations. In Italy, he saw that 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the population. In England, 70% of the total income was earned by 30% of the people. Everywhere he looked, he saw this phenomenon and concluded that for many things, 80% of the results come from just 20% of the effort. Today, we know it as the Pareto Principle or the 80-20 Rule. But it's not just about pea plants and economic data. The Pareto Principle applies for most situations. Take your phone out and look at all your apps. Chances are you have about 50 apps, but you only use about 10 of them on a regular basis. Or take this YouTube video that you're watching right now. Participation in online communities follow a similar ratio, the 99-1 Rule. Basically, of the people watching right now, that's right, I'm talking about you, 90% of you will just watch the video. 9% of you will interact with it in a small way, like hitting the like button. And 1% of you will interact with it in a big way, by commenting and hitting the like button. So if you're normally the 90% who just passively watches all the time while sitting on the toilet, now is your chance to join the 1% by hitting the like button and commenting Mr. Magic Lamp. When it comes to building wealth faster, being able to achieve more by doing less directly impacts your income. Whether you work for someone else, have your own business, or just want to start a side hustle, here's how you can achieve more by doing less. Create a list of all the things you do in a day. Checking emails, creating to-do lists, watching TikTok on a couch. Identify the highest leverage activities on your list. The activities and tasks that, when completed, will have the most significant impact on your goals. Soon, you'll realize that 80% of your day is spent on tasks that do nothing to help you reach your goal. Responding to every email, attending every meeting, picking up every spam call, and staring at a wall. Instead, focus on the 20% that matter. No matter your financial situation, there are only so many minutes in an hour, hours in a day, and days in a week. Instead of being too busy being busy, you should instead be busy doing things that can help you achieve financial freedom. But I'm here to tell you there's actually something else even more important to building wealth. Check out this video to find out what you need to do every single time you get your paycheck. These eight steps are key to helping you achieve financial freedom.